Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Affairs and Youth, Captain of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, followed the veterinary examination of the Monte Sino International Endurance Championship in the presence of the Vice President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, Vice President of the Supreme Authority of Rashid Equestrian Club and Horse Racing, member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was keen to follow up on the veterinary examination that was held in the championship village with the participation of the riders from the royal team and the riders of participating countries. Sheikh Nasser will lead the royal team where His Highness will participate in the 160 kilometer race. On this occasion, His Highness affirmed that the European presence of the royal team enhances the royal status of the Bahraini endurance sport, which enjoys the care of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser explained that the royal team embodied the high potential of the Bahraini endurance sport during recent forums, the latest of which was the team's successful participation in the Royal Windsor International Equestrian Festival, through which the royal team managed to win the 160-kilometer and the 120-kilometer titles. His Highness Sheikh Nasser indicated that the royal team's ambitions are to continue reaping the achievements having a prominent presence in the European forums. His Highness Sheikh Nasser wished the royal team success in this important participation. The Speaker of the Representative Council, who is the President of the Arab Interparliamentary Union, Fawziya Zainal, said that promoting joint Arab action is a fundamental pillar and a constant priority, as the diplomacy of the Kingdom of Bahrain is keen to utilize its capabilities in order to take it to broader horizons of progress in line with the national trend led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. During her meeting with the Secretary General of the Arab Interparliamentary Union, Faiz ash the Speaker of the Representative Council and President of the Arab Interparliamentary Union, indicated that the major Arab issues, especially the Palestinian issue, represent a prior priority for the joint Arab action, valuing the keenness of Arab countries to participate in the meeting and conferences that deal with the supporting of the Palestinian rights. Zainal was briefed on the participation and the preparations to hold the 33rd Emergency Conference of the Arab Inter the Arab Parliamentary Union on Saturday in Cairo entitled Al-Aqsa Mosque and all Islamic and Christian holy sites are first priority. Tataristan Republic President Rustum Manikhanov received the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs Chairman Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa who conveyed to him the greetings from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The President Mini Khanov extended greetings and gratitude to His Majesty the King for delegating the Chairman of the Supreme Islamic Council to participate in Tataristan's celebrations of the 1100 anniversary of the official adoption of Islam by the Bulgar people in the Volga Basin. The chairman of the Supreme Council presented to President Manikhanov a replica of the message sent by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to the ruler of his high, the ruler of Bahrain and its people in the eighth Hijri year, corresponding to 630 AD, upon which they entered Islam voluntarily about 1435 years ago. The Tatar president expresses pride in the participation of Bahrain in this anniversary, which reflects the depth of the close bilateral relations between the two friendly countries. He expressed keenness on further strengthening the bilateral relations, praising the ancient Islamic history on the land of Bahrain and Bahrain's contributions to the ancient Islamic civilization. And the Foreign Ministry Under Secretary for Political Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, held a meeting today with the Economic Development Board to discuss strengthening partnership and promoting the kingdom abroad in the fields of investment and tourism. He commented that the kingdom's pioneering achievements and competitive economic capabilities, in light of the comprehensive development process of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, he also expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Chairman of the EDB for his directives and initiatives to promote Bahrain in global forums as a model in economic openness and freedom. 
The meeting reviewed a number of development and investment initiatives, projects and programs that aim to attract investments, increase productivity, support economic diversification, and provide more job opportunities for citizens in the Economic Recovery Plan and Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. The Labour Fund Tamkeen held a meeting with a number of institutions working in the logistics sector to discuss opportunities for growth in the sector and motivate institutions to employ the support provided by Tamkeen in investment, employment and training. The meetings comes as part of Tamkeen's ongoing efforts to activate partnership frameworks with the private sector through direct communication with companies representing various sectors following the relaunch of the newly developed programs at the beginning of this year. This process also aims to ensure investment in supporting all the sectors, especially promising sectors that contribute more to developing the national economy and creating job opportunities for the Bahrainis in line with national priorities and strategies of the Economic Recovery Plan launched by the Kingdom of Bahrain in November of last year. Tamkeen had organized a number of meetings with more than 200 companies from various sectors prior to the launch of the program with the aim of closely identifying the needs of the institutions in light of the ongoing market changes. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 announced that starting from Friday the 20th of May 2022, individuals aged 12 to 17 years old may take an optional COVID-19 booster shot periodically every nine months from the date of their last booster shot. The task force noted that individuals aged between 12 and 17 may take the optional second booster dose as follows. The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine as a booster shot or a second dose of the same vaccine as the first booster shot. Recovered individuals can take the second optional booster shot dose six months after the date of the infection and nine months following the first booster shot. The task force stated that the green shield in the Be Aware app application will not change to yellow if eligible individuals do not opt for a second or future additional booster shot. The task force concluded by emphasizing the importance of receiving booster shots in a timely manner in order to preserve public health. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities celebrated yesterday evening the restoration of the historic Manara of the Al Fadl Mosque to its original design and historical aesthetics. The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, with the support of Her Highness Sheikh Maryam bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Bank of Bahrain and Kuwait, restored the Manara with the assistance of the Archaeological Conservation Center and concerned authorities with direct support from a number of private institutions in Bahrain. The restoration process for Al Fadl Manara took four years to complete as one of the most important edifices that form the identity of the city of Manama, which is considered a center for cultural and human convergence and a beacon for cultural production in Bahrain. The United States has reaffirmed its commitment to helping Saudi Arabia defend itself from external threats. This came in a Pentagon statement released after the U.S.-Saudi strategic joint planning meeting this week in Washington. The Undersecretary for Defense Policy, Colin Cowell, led the U.S. delegation while the Deputy Minister of Defense, Prince Khalid bin Salman, led the Saudi delegation. They also touched on the war in Yemen, maritime threats and violent extremist organizations. Hospitals in Dubai have been issued a guidance to enhance surveillance on monkeypox cases as the disease continues to be reported across the world, according to a circular from the Dubai Health Authorities. The DHA issued a citywide circular to hospitals under its umbrella to test for and report any possible monkeypox cases found. The circular was sent as part of the authority's commitment to control and reduce the spread of communicable diseases. In addition, to the main circular providing guidance to hospitals under DHA and additional attachment provided guidance from the World Health Organization based on the limited information available at this stage. It recommended all health workers to follow these measures. 
Amnesty International has urged Yemen's Iran-backed Houthi militia to free four journalists facing the death penalty for alleged espionage ahead of an appealing court hearing on Sunday. The four were arrested in June 2015 in Yemen's Houthi-held capital, Sana'a. The rights group said in a statement that the Houthi authorities must remove the death sentences and order the immediate release of the four Yemeni journalists who are facing execution following a grossly unfair trial. In April 2020, a Houthi court sentenced the four journalists to death on charges of what they say are treason and spying for foreign states. Their arrest was motivated by their reporting on human rights violations committed by the Houthis.